Promotional consideration paid for by the following. A good shoe starts from the ground up. At Aris, we make high quality footwear. In fact, you can find Aris running shoes in over 140 countries around the world. In the past, there's been some criticism about our workers. That's why I'm here at one of the Aris factories so you can meet some of them. Excuse me, sir. Do you enjoy your job here? It's fun. We get to play with knives. <laughs> I see. Is there a real sense of teamwork? My friend Joey sewed his hands together. Wow. You're learning some real skills. How about the salary and benefits? Yesterday, I made a dollar. See, that's the kind of dedication we have to our employees and the quality of our shoes. Aris Running Shoes. Always running from something. Shut up and sit down. Oh my God, who's opening today, Matt? I don't know what's happening. Hell, hell, uh, oh, are we on air? We're on air. Uh, Hey everybody, welcome to episode 379, it is me, Mr. Eric, coming at you full 3D, just like 3D Sonic back in the day on the old Sega Genesis, man, what a game that was, you know what I'm saying? Woo, gosh bless. Who am I talking to? Nobody, I'm talking to myself. There's nobody here with me. It's me, all alone. Oh, it's not true, hang on, I see a man. He's over there, he's shaking his head, yes, he's nodding, it's not shaking, he's nodding his head, oh, He's looking off into the distance. There's somebody moving under the walls. Remember that? Remember that show? There should be a show about people in the walls. I think that's what Matt does. I think that's where Matt lives. It's really weird, really crazy. Yes, of course, you just heard me say his name. He's with me today. It's Mr. Matt, the inglorious bastard himself. He's here on a wonderful new episode of Third Shift. Getting it done a little bit early, a little bit strange, but that's what we do around here. We handle business because we love you all. Mr. Matt? Before we talk about, of course, the gaming awards and other fun stuff, how's the week been? What you doing? It's a, it's a day early, but you know it's not too bad. What's going on? I'm so mad at you right now, Eric. I'm so mad. Oh no! Because tonight I was zoned in. I was playing games. I was good, and it was quiet. Everything was cool. Everything was great. And I went, ah, oh, tonight's going to be a nice night. And then you texted and said, oh, I, I think we got to do the show tonight, I dude. And I went. Well, Okay, I said okay, it's fine. Well, I'll do a little research. I'll, I'll get. I got my release. I got everything rocking and popping. I got it. I got it good. I can. I can knock it out. I can do it. And then as soon, as soon as I extended this mic arm, dugga 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 dugga. It's it uh, never fails. It's nonstop. So what are we doing? We're scrambling and we're brambling. We're trying to do the best we can. And I'm gonna tell you, the best I could do was do everything. I did everything over the past week. Now, it was a long week because the last show we recorded was on a Tuesday, so it would have been like one and a half see weeksies on the weekend. Was it the weekend? No. It was, I have no idea when it was. I think it was on Wednesday. Went to the Wharton Center. Saw the Hip Hop Nutcracker, which was different than I thought it would be. It's a show all about the Nutcracker and like the story of that, but also mixed with classic hip hop. And it was great. Because it started off, Curtis Blow is the MC, like the old MC from the 80s. He was the MC of the, the performance in the show. Came out, did like a classic hip-hop medley to start the show. I went, this is it. This is my stuff. I'm a classic hip-hop head. That's what I love more than anything. And he was like, hey, any classic hip-hop fans out there? And I went, yeah. And then I looked around, and there were like old people, like old, old. Like, you know, probably maybe they were in their 20s in the 80s when this stuff came out instead of I was a kid and like literally missed it at the time and got into it later. White hair, just straight up white hair, old people going, yeah, like old, old dorky white people dancing. And I went, this is this is crazy. This is wild. But it was great. And then it got into the actual show, which was interesting because it was it was like they played the Nutcracker music. And the dancing was like contemporary slash hip hop. And then, you know, there were maybe some beats underneath the classic music, but it wasn't what I expected. I expected it to be like a, almost like a play in, you know, that, that modern hip hop style, but it was straight up just dancing, like not like a ballet, like Nutcracker is, but you know what I'm saying. And it was really good. Really enjoyed it. Curtis Blow came out and did the breaks kind of as he introduced the whole cast at the very end. Fantastic. Different than I expected, but great. Absolutely great. Two days later, back to the Wharton Center, the Club 750 venue for the Emmanuel Wilkins Quartet, which was a jazz quartet. Saxophone, piano, bass, and drums. But this was 
again, not at all was I, what I was expecting. Because I don't know performances. When I get tickets to somebody I don't know, I just go in blind. And I went, okay, it's going to be like traditional jazz, you know? Traditional song archetypes and stuff. It was not. If the performance was 80 minutes long, which is what it was set for, it maybe went 90. They did like eight songs. So these were long jazz things like they'd start off with a, a regimented segment and then they would have like a big long breakdown segment and then they come back for another regimented segment but it wasn't traditional either everything was totally wild and totally weird there were like really technical like fast technical pieces in these pieces that they did and then like strange discordant things like disharmonies and it, it was unique and wild and cool the one piece that stood out to me the most was a piece called apparition it felt like you're watching the soundtrack to like a ghost themed episode of a show or an anime or a movie. Cause like sounds would just kind of like come in and come out. And it, it felt like you were experiencing an apparition, whether it was like an actual ghost, like sneaking in and out or like, like your, your faded memories of a, of a lost time that you can kind of, you can get little snatches and glimpses of. And then we go, it would come and go. And the drummer was like untuning the, the skins of his snare drums and grabbing different sticks and making completely different noises than a normal drum set makes. It was wild. It was crazy. I was like, this is the coolest thing I've seen. And it went on for like five, ten minutes or however long it was. And it wasn't jazz like at all in a traditional sense, but it was this weird experience. It was so cool. I couldn't believe it. I was sitting there like, man, I hope everyone else is digging this as much as I did. But that was a great show. Then, just last night, as we're recording this, hey, guess what? I went back to the Wharton Center for a performance by Voctive, which, again, a group I don't know anything about. I just knew it was going to be a holiday song group. That's it. This is an 11-person a cappella group. They've done all kinds of CDs and albums, all kinds of music, and they were phenomenal. Like, you normally think of a cappella, you think of, like, a high school group, and, oh, it's kind of okay. But they were all so good. And, you know, people had different solos and stuff, like, phenomenal like altos and baritones and tenors and I, I don't know all the things sopranos phenomenal and usually when you hear stuff like that you get like really good soprano women singers you think oh most of their songs will highlight them but since it was a holiday concert he brought all the basses and the baritones in and they did you're a mean one mr grinch amazing it was incredible just phenomenal so three performances that I absolutely enjoyed on the video game front. feels like I did this like a month ago now. I beat Persona 5 Tactica. It is okay. I feel like I like it more in hindsight because every Persona game has a nice ending. And I'll talk more about why I feel I didn't connect with this one like on the Whatcha Playing, you know, towards the end of the month. Mm. But it is okay. But I ju it's, it's, it's just a game that I played and it was too easy and I didn't connect with it very much. But... There's nothing wrong with it. Everything works. Everything is well done. It just, I don't know, just wasn't for me. Not that, not that great of a game. But oh God, let me tell you something that is for me. It's a game that I'm going to talk about as my release because I got a release because I'm a professional boy. I know what I'm doing. I get ready and I prepare for shows even when I'm not prepared for shows. So Eric, tell us what you did this week. Well, by golly, I did what I always do. Life stuff. Uh, I don't have the time you had. I didn't go watch a bunch of shows and artwork and this and that. Uh, raised some kids, did chores, cleaned the house, uh, had kids over, other people's kids stay over the nights and did did events and, and took care of them, got cookies and this and that. And Did you make like 12 dozen cookies I didn't make, and then in I didn't five make minutes they were all gone? And then they were all gone though. That didn't happen. Ah, that's, not, ah, ah. that's not a story I tell. That's another person's story. So in real life, it was busy, real busy, but it was just stuff nobody cares about. You know, you, you all don't care about what I did. On the game in front, I played Tales of Arise DLC, which, gosh, bless, man, it's so nice. Just getting back in there, what a colorful, wonderful, just vibrant fantasy land type game. I know I, I said that too, you know, to some extent last time, but I can't say it enough. It, it really is just... That's the game you want to play when you just want to get out of here. When you just want to just get out. You don't want to be in the real world in any way, shape, or form. This is it. This is it. Kasara, she's always like, 
I'm going to brew up the next best yummy thing for us tonight. And I'm like, I know you are, Kasara. And Shion's like, I can't wait to eat it. And I'm like, I know, Shion. We all we all joke about you. You're a big old pig. You, you, you eat everything. I'm like, you guys. Rinwell, would you just tell Law you like him? For God's sake, come on, you guys. Hoodle, shut up. Stop hooting. You know, I'm tired of you hooting. You're hooting too much. God bless. Man, it's, it's my homeboys, my homegirls. It's nice to be home. It's nice to just sit there and get right back into the the whole the whole camping, the rapport, everything we got going on. The only sad point, and I talked about this before. I don't know if I did on air or with just Matt or whatever. Probably a little of both, but they got those world bosses. And I'll tell you what, Matt. You know, I told you guys I got beat up by the one last time. Well, I found another one. I went, all right. You know, I'm about six, seven levels up, right? I, I can do this. No, I got I got beat up again. I got beat up again. Now, I'll say this, though. This time, I got all the way down to about the 10, 15% marker. And if I have never said this, I'll tell you now, for the world bo- the big bosses in the games, they do that in rage crap, where when they get down to about 10, 20%, all of a sudden they add moves and they start doing just way more damage than they were doing previously to that point. So I got to that point where they start all of a sudden just wrecking shop. And then that's when I slowly started to deteriorate. People were dying. I ran out of life potions, that kind of stuff, and I died. So I bet if I went and just bought like 15, 20 life potions, went back to this particular one I just found, I could probably take them down. But as you know, I'm a curmudgeon, as we all are, and I don't want to spend the money to get a whole bunch of life potions to have to waste all those life potions to beat this world boss. So I'm kind of like, no, I need to just go grind, and then I can just go beat this dude without wasting all these life potions. You are willing to buy them, but then you can't use them. Yeah, I can't That's use them. That's what I always do. I got to oh, save can them. I, can I afford 99 potions? Give me 99 yeah, potions. Give, give me all or of is, them. Is it time to use one? No. no I'll no, never I use can't them. do it. No, never. I might need it. I might need it later. I might need it later. Uh-huh. You know you won't, Eric. You've never needed it in any game ever, ever. Well, you never know. Maybe this is the one. This is the first one. I'm going to need those 99 potions. So it's the same old crap, same old RPG stuff, but I love it, and it's fun. What a game. And beyond that, I have played the World of Warcraft Discovery, which I've talked about, but I'm still grinding. I'm level 15 at this point, having a good time. Got 10 more levels, and I'll be 25, which is the max. Oh, but what a grind. Man, man, it's it's crazy. It was really fast, you know, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up into 10, 11-ish range. But now it's like, no, no, no. Now you're going to do... 15, 20 quests, plus just killing all sorts of mobs because they're everywhere, and then you're going to level. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that's right. This is where it slows down, and all of a sudden it's going to take me like a month to get the last 10 levels and get to 25. Gosh, dang it. So I'm like, well, Jared, you've already done it. We're about to cheat. I'm about to just have me and you run through some dungeons just over and over and over and over and over and over again and get me, uh, you know, power leveled up. So that's the plan is this weekend me and him are going to just power level some dungeons and see if we can't get me up a little bit quicker so we can do the uh, impromptu new raid and have a good time with it. So with that, that's pretty much it. It's pretty much all I've played on the game front. I really want to do some Remnant 2, but Matt's been doing a lot of shows. I've been doing this and that. It's, it just, it. I thought with winter coming, it'd be, you know, open. We'd have more time, but so far this is not happening. So... It's really kind of sad, but I really, I keep dreaming of this game, and it's not happening. It sucks. It just sucks. And we have something this Friday also, so we can't do it Friday either. Oh, yeah. We're already screwed. This weekend's already shot. <laughs> Shotgun. Hey, Matt, since we know the other guy doesn't listen to the show, you know, that. hey, I still haven't even filled out my character sheet or done anything with this. Jesus stuff. Christ. So. I don't see <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I did it like last second, like on Thursday, whatever it was. Like, no, it was, I, I think we canceled on Thursday because it was supposed to be Friday because we were both feeling crappy. Mm-hmm. I did it like Wednesday night, like scrambling and brambling. I was like, all right, I got to think up something more for him to do. I got to think, oh my God, okay, okay. I think I got it. I think I got it. And then Thursday, we both still felt like garbage. So I went, all that effort was just wasted. I haven't touched it since, yeah. but I think I still remember any stuff. I got got all my stuff filled out, but I don't know if I followed all of his rules or not. Yeah, I don't know. So Phil, everybody super cool. Me and Matt agreed to a buddy who used to do like D&D for a life. He was a lifer d and d Me and Matt, I've played like here and there over the years. Matt's never played. But he, this is his thing. He really wants us to do a little thing. So we're like, all right, sure, cool. 
So we get there, and he's all just in it. He's in it, man. And he's tell- he's he's throwing all sorts of numbers and rules at us, like left and right. Mm-hmm. I ain't we ain't picking this up. We ain't picking this up like we're supposed to be picking this up. And then he goes, "Here's your homework. Here's a bunch of homework. Get all this stuff done because I want to actually play next time we get together. No more of this. I want to play." I say, "Okay," which I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Because I'm gonna go to him when then when we do meet and say, "From now on, D and D only happens at the D and D sessions. I got too much of my own life. I can't." I can't dedicate any of my free time to this this thing. It has to happen during our session that we plan out for D and D. Whether it's building characters, actually, you know, playing, it doesn't matter because it's stressing me out, and I just want to watch my shows, play my games, you know. And as I told you, I've got a ton of other duties that you know I have to do. I isn't just a forty year old man with kids and a oh, wife and home and all this other crap. I. I I want to do this. I want to do this for my buddy. He wants me to do it. But th- that isn't my primary hobbies. So I'm like, this has to happen on those days, not not my own time. Once the character sheet is filled out, then it's just look at number. What What's the number that you have for in, in spot X? Three. All right, add that to your blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay, so it's six plus three. Okay, nine. Okay. So I think once that's done, it will just be planned because there's, I mean, what homework can we do if he's... He's got to tell he's, us what yeah, to do. He's, he's one supposed to, yeah, tell us where to go, what to do, what's happening, and we're just live action playing along. So I, I suspect it'll get easier, but but just in general, I, I should have at that moment said, no, 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 let's ne- let's make next session another get to know, build our half characters, and half. yeah, half and half, or at least half and half. Check what we got, mm-hmm. see if that's right. If it's not, we'll work through it. Then we'll start. If so, then we'll start. You know, that's what I should have done, but I didn't. So I digress. You all don't care about all that. But you know what? It is the weekly thing. It is something that's happening. So I brought it up. And it has been like three months since the last one. Yeah. Because we can never do anything right. So anyway, you gave me so many awesome segues with the first game you talked about with your Tales of Rise thing. A magical land that's full of color and wonderment. And you just want to get away from the real world and get into this fantasy world and have a great time and see wonderful, colorful things. And then we talked about a ton more stuff. So I'm going to dial it back and say, hey, remember all that stuff that you said that I just said? That applies to my release this week and the game that I've been spending the most time with this week, which is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. It came out on the 7th of December, developed by Massive Entertainment, published by Ubisoft for PS5, Xbox Series consoles, and PC. And I'm telling you, I don't know what the buzz is on this game. I don't know what the reviews are. I don't know what professionals say. Because I got this game, and what I wanted from this game was to go around a magical world, and a big open world, and just have a great time. And that is what I have been doing 100% in this game. If you want the story, you're a Navi who's been stolen away from her clan by the RDA, along with a group of kids. Then all the stuff went down in Avatar 1. You get put into cold sleep. 16 years later, you wake up. And you're off to the world. Their idea is back on Pandora doing stuff. And as a member of this tribe that you all are, this tribe is about telling stories and going and reaching out to all the other tribes of Pandora. So you kind of take up that mantle. Hey, the bad guys are back. We got to band everybody together and get, get the band back together, essentially. So that's, that's the overarching story. Meet a bunch of tribes, do a bunch of quests for them, explore their little biome, take down RDA facilities and stuff, and just keep doing that all the way around. And I got to tell you, it's fun. It's so much fun. And what I didn't expect at all is that the traversal mechanics feel really good. You can slide, you can double jump, you can swing on things. There's little plants that give you like additional stamina. So like right at the start, it's one of the first quests you got. There's an RDA raid, but it's three kilometers away. And you got to get there in like six minutes. And as you're doing it, you're like, finding these things you can rappel down and then jump over here and rappel down this and then slide up in here. And you've seen it in the movies, especially the first one, if you've watched them, you know, they're kind of like leaping and jumping and bumping all through the jungle like Tarzan. And you get to feel like that because when you find these big, long, twisting branches and they have all the little stamina refreshing flowers on there, you're sliding, you're jumping, you're ducking, you're dodging, you're weaving. It feels good. It feels great. So literally anything that I have to do in this game, when it's get a quest and go all the way over there to get some peaches or whatever, it's fun because I'm going through this colorful world that looks like nothing else. It looks freaking amazing. And I'm doing it with these awesome travel mechanics, these traversal mechanics. And it's just fun. It feels great. And on top of that, you're in Avatar world. So guess what I just did not too long ago? I got my Ikran, my flying lizard thing. 
and the quest to do that, like you go up into their rookery and the music that's coming in, it's uh, this drums, it's getting the epic music going. You're seeing this beautiful scenery because now you're going up where they can fly. You're climbing up all these crazy vines and then onto like the floating islands and stuff. You're seeing this beautiful overlook and then you're bonding with your Ekron. Now you're flying around. It's incredible. It's everything that I wanted this game to be. Then I will say some of the quests, you know, they're not that great. They're side quests. Go get some of this, bring it back, da 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 especially like the specific crafting ones. Hey, can you go out and get some moss off of this area in a specific quality so you can craft this thing? Those are a little boring, but some of the side quests have been great. Touching ones, funny ones. It just feels good. Like even if you're not a fan of like the movies and like the story of the movies, which we know is pretty simple, you know, humans bad, Navi good. It's just fun to run around in this world, to do these cool things and see these cool creatures, because everything in the world, kind of Metroid Prime style, you can scan it, and it'll dump this huge thing in your logbook, your hunter's guide, about every single animal, what they do, what they're they're like, all this stuff. Almost every single plant that's out there, it tells you where to find things, how to find things, how to craft things, how to cook things. They made a whole world in here, and I'm only in the first biome. Like I just got to the point where I can go to the second one. And everything is so much fun. Even the combat and the stealth are fun. I just did doing the RDA facilities. When you first start off and you don't have many skills or or abilities, it's tough. It's real tough. You really got to be doing good on stealth and like on top of your game. Because if you don't have points into your stealth skills in the skill tree, you can get wrecked. Just absolutely wrecked. But then you go off, do some more side quests, get some more skills, get some more real world skills too, because you're running across enemies out in the world and you're learning how to use your traversal mechanics around enemies too. Then you go back in and you just wreck shop in the place. It feels so good. It feels so nice. And just like Eric said with Tales of Arise, just like I said earlier, it's so nice to get done with a day of work or a day of other responsibilities And just, you know, I got an hour and a half and I'm going to sit in front of my giant bright monitor and go into a colorful, magical world where everything is so cool and so wonderful and just escape. It's great. If you like open world games, especially ones with fun traversal mechanics, check out Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. There's a lot to love in this game. Even if you don't like the movies, if you don't like these types of games, there's all kinds of stuff to find and do. Really cool moments, really fun things to do. I highly recommend it. I am loving it, obviously. I knew I would. That's why I pre-ordered it. I'm just happy to have all my expectations are fulfilled and surpassed at this time. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, everybody should play it because it's great. I'm so happy that you're happy with the blue people. I suspected you would be. You know me. Probably won't get that one, but it does look cool. It does look fun. It's awesome. Now, a game... That I've been watching, Matt, and you say I'm unprepared, which is true, but I'm not that unprepared, all right? The finals. The finals hit December 7th. It is published and developed by Embark Studios, done on Unreal Engine 5. It's out on, of course, all the big platforms, PC, uh, PlayStation 5, and the new Xbox system, whatever that's called. And let me tell you, this game looks crazy fun. It looks frenetic and just wonky as all hell. The environment's all destructible, and it's highly encouraged that you use them to screw over the other team. So it's a first-person team-based shooter. You go in, you got to collect all the money possible. The team with the most money wins, and then you get these areas where there'll be like these, uh, these, these big uh, things of money, basically, and you got to try to keep a hold of them. And the other team's trying to stop you from getting it because, of course, you cash in. That's more money for you, and then of course you're more likely to lose. So they'll be like one in this uh, top of a building on, on, the, on the roof, right? And you can go in there, and the team's up there trying to protect it. You can shoot the floor out underneath them. They go collapsing down. You can set all sorts of traps and things up. And it's, it is wild. And the, in the maps they have, just all the areas to play with. There's so much verticality to it and just everything else. It is just cool to watch. I, I, I'll probably never play. You know, I'm not a competitive first-person shooter guy per se, but this game looks gorgeous. It feels awesomely fun and frenetic. The only downside is uh, people were talking about how, like, I guess the voices were AI generated because, let me tell you, the game is basically like a Running Man, Hunger Games type setup. 
So you're in here competing, you know, live with an audience, and there's commentators talking about you and the other team as you're doing stuff and making plays. And I guess, I guess they're AI generated, so there was some hubbub about that. I don't know if it got fixed or not. I'm not really big on the whole argument either way. I understand people should get paid for what they do for sure, and I encourage, of course, voice acting stuff to be done by human beings. But that's another issue for another day. Either way. If it got fixed, awesome. If it didn't, apparently people are still enjoying the hell out of it. It looks fun to me. So I would encourage you to go check out a little bit of them finals and see if it's something up your alley. If you like a first-person, crazy, fast-paced game, allows all sorts of environmental blow-ups and destroying of this and that, this might be something for you. I like watching it. I can tell you that much. Anytime I see it, I do pop it on. Playing it wise, probably not. I'm just, you know, I suck. I get beat up. I can't. I'm like, oh, where did I get shot from? Ooh, I'm looking around, and I'm already dead. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an 80 year old. I was complaining the other day about what Grand Theft Auto. You know, what I'm saying? you can't have me playing these games. Now, I would say if this went live any other week, literally any other week, I would be the one playing it, and we'd be tag team in this release and having a great time. But since Avatar came out, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna install the one and then download the other and. Uh, Oh, what, what, what am I going to play tonight? Well, I'm going to retreat into a magical, colorful world. It, but I'm excited for this one. And the big kicker is, and the, and the segue into the topic we're going to talk about, is this was, it wasn't revealed at the Game Awards, but the release date was revealed at the Game Awards. I saw a trailer for it and I went, sweet, it's the finals. Maybe they'll have the release date. And they went, surprise, sucker, it's live right now. Like, literally right now. I didn't even know it was in, like, early access or beta, because I've seen people talking about changes from the beta. I didn't even know that was happening, let alone, boom, that it was going to be here right now. So that was, that's um, that's an easy one for me. Hey, there's my first reveal from the Game Awards that got me super excited, because I've been excited for this game for a while, as longtime listeners know. What about you, Eric? Anything stand out for you? Oh, a ton of stuff stood out, man. What are you talking about? The Game Awards hit, folks. We got to watch it all... And, you know, I want to go high-end first. I got to go high-end. What in the holy hell, dude? Like, oh, and this year's RPG, this, 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 like, and then, oh, hey, for the, like, for that happened, where they actually got to go talk about their game and say thank you, they walked to the mic, they opened their mouth, and then the song to leave started playing. What the hell was that? That was crazy. It was, and... I had almost forgotten about it until you brought it up because I was overwashed with the 34 games that I wrote down, mm-hmm. which weren't even all the reveals and everything. But halfway through, I, I felt it and I realized it. But as soon as it was done, I don't think I actually texted you this, but I said, Jeff wants this to be a big thing. He wants to have all the reveals and all the awards. But this needs to be like a two-night thing. Yeah, You need to have all the reveals first, and then you need to have a longer award show with like that year when they were talking about the game of the year nominees everyone had its full musical piece like interspersed between the actual awards that's what they need to do they need to make the awards feel like they mean something by shunting most of or a lot of all the reveals to a different night a different time or just medley them in in, into two nights in general yeah 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 this many reveals and this many announcements for the who won what with their speeches and all their good stuff to this night and then the next night you're doing the other half yeah, yeah. Because people will still tune in there for that. Because what will happen if you just all reveals one night, all the awards one night, no one's coming back for the awards. Everyone says they love it and want to see it, but they're not going to watch it. They'll just go get the quick hits at the end of it. I'm coming back. I'm going to I would it. come back. Yeah, I would love to watch it. I'd love to watch them give their speeches. I love, like you said, the medleys that could go with it, all the orchestral fun stuff. That That's awesome. I, I'd come back. But I'm just saying, in general, the audience would be half at least – you know, of what would the reveal night would be. So keep them, keep them together, but just break it apart. It's two hours tonight, two hours tomorrow night, or two and a half, two and a half, whatever it needs to be. Everyone's tuning in. In fact, that's just more yummy consumption for us. You know, there's to me, obviously there's more money involved and you got to get that all figured out. But let's be frank, he's doing that part. How many ads do we have next on in them? I mean, for God's sake, there's, there's money, there's money being made at the Game Awards. So I don't think that would even be an issue at all, in my opinion. Yeah, 100% agree. It, it's more advertising time. It's more everything time. You could split up the giveaways across the two different nights so that, you know, they had three giveaways. I was only able to enter two because the one site was always bogged down. You could have it boom, 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 or spread the giveaways across two nights. 
That way more people get a chance to enter all the different entries they want to do. I hate to sound like I'm negative on it because I loved the show. Yeah, it was, but it was just the balance wasn't there. It felt wonky. It was it was, it was too much. All yeah, crammed it, in. it felt like more of a spectacle of of ads and and reveals than it did an award show. And I get it. People don't generally want award shows. They want the reveals. But then you got to change your name. You can't be an award show if you're just gonna go. Uh, uh, Costa Rica won this, uh, Dame Dame won that, Ding Ding won that, Guy Bobo Bo won that. Anyways, the game reveal, all right. And you can do that with certain awards. Like mm-hmm. the esports ones, I feel like it feels right, because they never have the esports athletes there. They never have anybody from League of Legends which always wins, which should always win. But like stuff like best music, best you know graphics, best whatever, those should all at least have a stage presentation, oh, something. Yeah. Best RPG. Should best have RPG. A stage oh, yeah, sure. Whatever. Just lump it in with best action yeah. game. Best this. Best, best. What the hell was that? So that part was sad to me. It didn't. I didn't detract. I still had a great time with the show and had fun. But yeah, for I could not not mention it. It was it was wild to me. And then for the game, the actual game there. Mind you, I'm already exhausted. I'm about to go to sleep. I don't even want to be up anymore. Mm-hmm. And then the game of the year gets awarded, and we already know who it's going to be. It wasn't a surprise. Even for them, the game of the year. He comes up and he goes, wow, this is uh, do 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 but my dead friends and, and you know, and we do 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 get off the stage. That's the game of the year. Baller's Gate. You get you just invite him up. That's big. That's the big one. And he just mentions his, their de- dead companions who helped make the game. And you're like, get out. All right. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> and especially because it's not broadcast on TV. You don't have time things you got to hit. Now, granted, I'm sure if you go over, you know, past 1130, then you do have to pay the union workers for another whole extra hour or whatever. You know, the security guys, you got to pay them for an extra hour. But you know what? You're already paying them buku bucks. I'm sure you're not hurting because you got all the ad revenue. But I will say two more things on the overall thing. One, I, and I was going to lead with this, but we had kind of a funky intro to it. Yeah. Thank God they had the security people. The first thing I looked for when they did like the little flyover camera shot, I went, what's happening at the edges of the aisles? There's velvet ropes. And I didn't know what it was because the security humans they got were so massive. I didn't know what was standing there. I was like, is that like a, like a statue? Like you'd have to fumble around the statue? No, just enormous security humans. Yeah. And they did a great job. I mean, obviously it was necessary. We talked about it. It had to happen. I'm just glad that it did mm. because you, we've said it before. You know how the internet is. You know how stupid public people are. If that wasn't there, something dumb would have happened. I'm glad they nipped it in the bud. They need to do this forever from now on. Never have the little little you know thrust into the audience stage. Always have it be like this because there was no problem, no nothing, no disruptions, absolutely nothing else. Yeah. So good on for that. Overall, fun show. I enjoyed it. I hope he gets the balance a little bit better next year. He's already. I'm sure Jeff's got so much feedback already on the 30 second thing with the. I, I'm I'm 100 certain that's going to change next year, probably to a minute, or you know whatever, somewhere in that range. So hopefully that happens. And if it does, and then they add in a little bit, just some minor stuff. But gosh, bless man. I don't know. I I've been you know I've heard different podcasts throughout the week about their. their I don't know what some of them were talking about. They, they said it was kind of not not for them, a little bit lame. I had. There were so many good games. It was crazy. It was good. A lot of good stuff. I'm not even going to mention all, but I'll start right now. The Exodus. Matthew McConaughey comes on out, and he makes, I love, you know, this guy's awesome. Don't get me wrong. But God bless, that joke was terrible. Probably just because I didn't get the context of it. But he goes, ah, oh, he told me, all right, all right, all right. But they told me to say pew, pew, pew. And I don't know what that's from. I don't, I don't understand where the joke is. But it was weird, but still it's great that he comes out and apparently he's in this game, Exodus. I didn't hear his voice or anything in the actual trailer, but hey, whatever. You know, you got Matthew out there doing his thing. Cool beans. He got more time than the developers did to say his part on Exodus. That's cool beans. It was fun. The game itself, former Bioware peeps, looking really cool, looking weird. It's got all that time stuff because they're going through black holes and doing all sorts of weird time stuff and out in space. I liked it. I was interested in it. I'm going to be watching this one because if I can get me a Mass Effect game that's not Mass Effect, but it's good, that's a thumbs up, man. Now, since you talked about presenters, I got to say, Simu Liu did the same thing. 
he just hogged all the time that he had. Mm -hmm. And granted, he's a Hollywood actor. I'm sure nobody has like guff with it. Game of the year, or was it director? I can't remember. Timothy Chalamet. He came out. He did his job. He didn't do a bunch of goof-tacular stuff. He came out. He was professional. That's what I want to see from this. A couple goofs, you know, here and there. But I don't know. I felt like Matthew McConaughey went long. Simu Liu went really long. But the one I want to talk about, and I'm sad because I didn't write it down. I had it written down. We were going to do the review, and I was going to talk about it. How can I even describe it? The guy who made the game about dealing with the loss of his father and revealed that trailer, and the trailer looked awesome. That that presentation, that reveal, that presenter himself, he got me a little choked up. Because you could tell this meant something to him. It was important to him. He showed off the game, and it was that one that I said kind of looked like Guacamelee. Yeah, it's an EA original. Yeah, you had the two different colors of attacks, and just like beautiful action, kind of going back and forth, side scroll and action. I had it written down. I don't know what the title of the game was, but the game looked great. And that presentation, since we're talking about presenters, it hit me in the feels. I don't even like my dad, but I went, man, I feel I feel for this guy and I want to support his game and get it. Tales of Kanzara? I think that's it. Tales of Kanzara, yes. Yeah, that one, uh, like I said, is the original. That one looked really good to me, too. Had that cool 2D vibe going, you know, the Aurea, Will the Wisp, and that type of style. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. That's definitely a game I want to watch. But I'll tell you another game, man, that I really am looking forward to. That's Visions of Mana, revealed by, of course, Square Enix. A brand new Mana game, which I didn't expect at all. You know, they did all the releases, remasters, and whatnot of all the old Mana games over the last, what, year or two now. Which was cool, but, you know, let's be honest, there's tons of stuff to play. It's hard to get to some of those types of games. But I've always had like a cool spot in my little heart for the Mana series because that's one of those games as a kid I watched my buddy Dan play just like all the time. So I have a lot of memories of this game, not me playing, but it doesn't matter. You know, when you're a kid and you watch your friends, you all know the deal. And to see a brand new title coming, Visions of Mana, I'm like, oh, I'm in 100%. I was stoked. It looks so colorful, so fun, so carefree. Gives me that Tales of Rise vibe again, where I'm in a fantasy land, just not caring, just going around, killing these fluffy monsters, having a good time. So, got very excited about it. Can't wait to see some more on it. Of course, it doesn't come out till sometime next year. They didn't give a date. It's going to PS5, PS4, Xbox, and of course, PC. So, basically all the places except old Switch. Looking forward to it. Now, in the mad scramble to get ready for the show, I mostly wrote down the big things, but I did write down some of the indie games because there were tons of indie or indie level or indie apparent type of games on here. And one that I think the recap had it at the very end, so it did remind me of it, was a game called Windblown, which was that isometric Hades style, you know, camera angle, looking like fast, fluid action, action RPG type of stuff. But you could play it with, they showed, I think, three friends. So three person co op. In that Hades fast action style, it got me hyped. It got me excited. I think this is one of the first ones on the show. Mm -hmm. And I texted you. I was like, dude, this is it. And then it just kept rising and rising and rising after that. But that was one that definitely stood out for me. And another one that did that too, it's a crossover between two games, Dave the Diver and Dredge. Yeah, that looks awesome. Two games that I absolutely want to get back in and play. So seeing the little Dredge boat, seeing Dave talking to what is the merchant that's on the Dredge Mm -hmm. boat, I went, this is... This is it. Two games that I haven't been able to play, and at least nearly as much as I want, crossing over to create like a super DLC that I absolutely have to get. Two indie level things just blew my socks off right away. Yeah, and I'll give you a quick one here. Zenless Zone Zero, Matt, coming sometime 2024. We only got a few days left, so I don't know when in the world this is supposed to hit. But man, I'm all about it. That anime, 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 anime. And I know it's the Hoyoverse stuff. And I keep saying I'm going to get in and try some of it, and I never do, except that's a lie. I did do Genshin Impact for a good 10, 15 hours, but just kind of, I couldn't keep it up because it's one of those never-ending games, and I knew if I did that, I'd never play the games I'm supposed to be playing. But this one, maybe. Maybe this is one of them I pop into, you know? I don't know. It just looks cool. It just, it just, oh, it's got the anime vibe, man. And you know, I love my anime. So, maybe. 
And I'll give you another two-pack of Matt-specific games. One which is called Thrasher, which I don't know much about, but it looked like a rhythm game where you control like a rhythm worm. And it looked like it was a VR game, maybe? I don't know. But it looked like a first-person perspective, and you're gra- guiding this worm through all these different like little like strings of notes. Like, and I watched it, and I went, "That's I want it. I want it because I've, I've been loving theater rhythm, you know, all the, all the rhythm musical type of stuff. I wanted that. And then much earlier in the show, too, they had Harmonium the Musical. Now, they just had the musical RPG not, that came out not too long ago, and I went, I need to play that because I love musicals. This was another spin on that because it features a deaf protagonist and, like, her deaf friends, and then she gets sucked into, like, this musical world, and so she can see and feel the music that she can't see and feel in real life. And I think they said, you know, a lot of the members of the dev team were actually deaf, too. So a unique spin, lots of unique representation, and then another musical type of game that I want to get into, that I want to experience. Two musical pack from Matt. You know I gotta love it. Ooh, and this one I'm sure you're gonna be on is Kamuri. It's the the first game by Akumi Nakamura's new studio. And of course, uh it's the studio I think is called Insane. She came out and did her little thing. I couldn't really understand what she was saying, but it was fun anyway. And she was just energetic and happy to be there and it was really cool. But the game's like I don't know, it looks like some kind of weird action game. Once again, has that cool, vibrant style to it. I have no idea what the hell is going to be happening in this thing. But just off of her excitement, and then, of course, what her previous work has been, and then just how this little trailer looked, got me excited. You know, I was like, ah, this, look, this looks unique. It looks different. It looks cool. It looks fun. I hope to see more so I can get a better feeling for what the hell this is going to be all about. But we shall see sometime in the future. It ain't coming out till sometime next year, maybe the year after. Who the hell knows? Yeah, definitely agree with that. I've been following her and her little development studio. Like you said, this is their first game, so it's nice to see an actual reveal. We don't see any gameplay. It's just a CG trailer. What I'm hoping is that this is a like a co-op experience because it looked like there was a team, and I'm hoping it's not like a team-based shooter because, like we said, our experiences with that kind of hit and miss. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited to see what they can do. It's in that like yokai world, like looking through the portal to see the yokai and interact with them. Yeah. Hopefully it's a lot of fun. I gave another game that's hopefully a lot of fun that is on an indie level, or maybe not at this point, I don't know. Really early in the show, they showed off Pony Island too. And this is another one of those games like Inscription, like the first Pony Island, like what Frog Fractions probably, where it's like mixing media and like the the game you start playing is not the game you finish playing and all kinds of craziness is going on. I feel like they showed too much in the trailer. Like you see the FMV of the guy, you know, like the Panda King or whatever it is, telling you, the player, how to do the thing and then showing the pixel art action that you're actually doing for other parts of the game. I wish they hadn't shown that much, but it looked like one of those weird, wacky, crazy games that you can only get on this weird kind of crazy indie slash single A kind of level, it got me excited because anything that's weird and unique and strange, especially visually, I'm 100% into. So it got me hyped. It got me excited. Ooh, and I'll tell you, there ain't no way we're getting out of this without mentioning Moon Studio, which is peeps who did Ori, which I mentioned earlier. They've got no rest for the wicked coming. And it looks like a Diablo type ARPG so I'm already stoked because their their style, the way they draw, the way they do things is gorgeous, just gorgeous. So them coming in here and trying to do a Diablo-like game, which I love Diablo-like games, this is a double win for me because I played the hell out of Ori, well, I don't know, it was last year I think at this point, but it, and it was great, but it started to get way hard, just like Celeste did. At the end, it was just, they, they wanted too much from my 40-year-old man brain, well, I was 39 or whatever at the time, but it got to be crazy insane. But you know what? A Diablo-type game, I can do that for days. So I cannot wait to see what this comes into being. Can't wait to see some more on it, see how it all comes to fruition. It's looking solid so far, and it looks gorgeous. So definitely check that out if you like Diablo-like games. That's no rest for the wicked, Mr. Matt. I'll give you another two-pack. I'll give you a game that got on my radar when we saw the reveals, and I haven't heard or seen a single thing about it since. It's the first Descendant. The game where you're in the future, playing as the most gorgeous people, having some crazy action times. We got a, not a release date, but at least a release window, saying summer 2024. So I was glad to see it. Glad to see it back alive, you know, and not like disappearing off the radar somewhere. And then a game that was only announced. No details, no trailer, no nothing. But we heard that Arcane Leon, 
who did Deathloop, who did the Dishonored games, is working on a Blade game. And I went, that's perfect. Like, whatever you think about Redfall and all that stuff that just happened, if you think of, like, Deathloop and you put Blade in there, you're, like, swooping around and getting crazy abilities to get the drop on a bunch of people. Same thing with Dishonored, like, fast hacks slashing people up and or doing stealth. That's perfect for Blade. It got me excited because I just got off playing a really great Marvel game. Now I'm hearing that a cool Marvel property is in the hands of a cool development studio. I'm hoping for the best from this. Obviously, nothing else was revealed or talked about, no dates or anything, but the potential of that, it got me excited. I'm right there with you. Can't wait to play it. Yeah, I'm not as big on Marvel like you are, but by God's, that looked dang good. That looked real good. So I'm right there with you. I'll give you a quick, two quickies real quick. These were DLC announcements. That's God of War, got itself a brand new God of War of Valhalla, came out. It's out right now as of December 12th, so you can go play this. It's a free DLC for you, so if you own the game, it's for you. I was excited. I was stoked. Unfortunately, it's more of like a roguelite trials type expansion. I've never liked trials stuff. I don't like it just stresses me out too much having to go from battle to battle to battle to battle, see how long you can go. It's too much for me. So I went, awesome. Ah, poop on a stoop. Dang it, this one's not for me. However, it does take place in accordance with the story. So this is right after everything happens in the God of War 2. And I'm like, dang it, Kratos is going to have some more storyline here. And I want to I wanna know what he's doing and what, what he's up to. But I don't like that type of gameplay. So I, I'm, I'm so mixed on it. It's just, ah, I don't know what to do. I don't, I'm so stressed out. Maybe I'll put it in easy mode and just do it. Maybe that's the ticket right there. And then, of course, the second one was the Final Fantasy 16 drops, Matt. Two yes. DLCs, which, from what I hear, are it, because uh, that, that whole team has disbanded. They are now gone, and they've been put into different teams to work on new projects. So I assume these are this is what we're getting. And one of them out is out right now as of December 12th. That's Echoes of the Fallen. And that's going to be all about this mysterious tower and these black cubes getting thrown around the you know cities and towns, and you got to figure out what the heck's going on. It takes place right before the last battle, so in concurrence with the story for the most part. It sounds like a good time, and some cool bosses from what I hear, which, as me and Matt have talked about extensively, the bosses in that game make it what it is. It's fantastic. They are so much fun. And then the second one is uh, Rising Tide or something like that, right? I can't Something remember. Like that, yeah. Something like that. It's basically the whole lost Leviathan that we all know, knew was going to come about some way in shape or form. That's going to happen. You're going to get to go up against friggin' the Leviathan in whatever way that means or happens. I can't wait for it. That comes next year, though. So those two DLCs dropping were great news, fun stuff. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. Wasn't expecting it at all. When Creative Business Unit 3's little logo came up, I went, what the hell are they working on next? And then we saw Clive and Joshua and Jill, and I went, yeah. It feels like it's not time yet, but it's almost time for me to jump back in and finish that Final Fantasy difficulty playthrough to get the Platinum while wrapping both of these DLCs. Obviously, only the first one's out now, but maybe once the second one comes out, it'll be time for me to wrap both of them in, fold in that complete story. I'm excited for it. Now, I'm gonna, I'm just going to start rolling the ball down the hill and give you a whole giant map pack because... Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League had another trailer, and it was set to the very famous Gorillaz song. And I went, you're trying to hook me. You're trying to get me. Now, I can't talk about my impressions that I had with it, but I went, this is a, it's, it's an old-school hip-hop type of trailer. This is the thing that I love. You're trying, to, you're trying to get the fish hooks in. You're trying to do it. So it got me excited just because it was a trailer made exactly for me, 100% for me. Another game. That's 100% for me. You know, I, I, I had my doubts. I had my feelings that, you know, it's when, when you hear something said by every single voice that you've ever heard, even though you know it not to be true, you kind of start to be like, well, maybe there's like a little fragment, a little splinter of me that's starting to believe it. But no, I kept the faith, even though I haven't mentioned it for a long time. Skull and bones got a trailer yes it got a trailer at the game awards it made me so happy i texted eric to all in caps f yeah skull and bones yes 
They showed off sea creatures. They showed off ghost captains and stuff. They talked about a website you can go to to get into the technical tests and beta. And I went in there and I went, I'm definitely not signed up for this, am I? And I said, yes, you already are because you are a super diehard fan of Skull and Bones. We're going to email you when the next stuff comes out. I got so happy. I was so happy. It was the greatest day of my whole life. But another thing that did make me happy, almost nothing was shown on it. But anytime Kojima's on stage, it makes me happy. Anytime, you know, same thing with... You know, famous film directors, when they come out at the Oscars and they reveal something, or, you know, the next Dune Part 2 is coming out from that awesome filmmaker, Denny Villeneuve. OD was revealed, Kojima was on stage, he's working with Jordan Peele on it. No discussion of what the story is, no nothing, just the, the tech reveal of the screaming faces. It was crazy. And I hope that other people other than Kojima, like other cool directors and stuff, do get these opportunities too, because it... it it gives it that legitimacy. Like when this person releases a new game, it's important. You bring him out. He's going to talk about it. I hope everybody else gets that opportunity too. Cause there's lots of great directors. There's lots of great studios. Everybody should get this type of treatment, but he's my favorite. So it got me super excited. And there's already secrets being revealed. Apparently the German actor, whenever he's opened his mouth, each frame was revealing uh, different uh, characters, which revealed silent Hill. What? Oh, my God. And so everyone's like, is that just him goofing around because he was part of the PT thing? Or is this, like, actually going to be some kind of shoot-off of Silent Hill? Is like, did Sony get a hold of Konami and get a deal going? Not Obviously, they wouldn't with Kojima, but you know what I mean. Tertiarily, and now he's actually going to get to do this. It's OD. Everyone says it's overdose, but that could still be tied into the Silent Hill world. Or was he just messing around? Who knows? But, of course, then as you saw, the, uh, the door opening was the same door from PT, literally. Mm-hmm. So it's like... He's being goofy, he's being weird, and then the girl's eyes, you know, when she was screaming, was that door opening again, and the thing, and the thing. It was, mm-hmm. So there's already stuff being found out through the little trailer, and through this and that, and it was usual Kojima, weird stuff happening. Very cool. I had a good time with it. So this one, Matt, I don't, I still don't know what to feel about this, but it gets me excited. The First Descendant, all right? It's supposed to come out in the summer next year. I still don't know whether I'm going to like this game or not care about this game whatsoever, it looks good though. It looks it looks good, and I don't, I just don't know. In this trail, you know what it did? It did nothing else. It made me still go. I don't know. It looks cool. Seems really weird. And I like this gigantic robot lady with the shifting face thing. That's a bad guy, but I still have no idea what the hell this game's about or what I'm doing or why. But definitely cool. Go watch the first descendant, the new trailer, and then you can be confused and still mildly happy. Hopefully, like I am. Why don't you jump on what I talked about it? I talked about that, too. I know. Come on, sucker. God bless. (laughs) But I will say, something in the same vein, I don't have much to say about it, because I don't think they showed off all that much new, but Banishers, what is the subtitle? Ghosts of New Eden? Yeah. I've been hyped about this since the announcement. It's that game from Don't Nod, where you play as the husband and the wife as a ghost, and you're kind of going back and forth between ghost world and real world, and like solving people's problems with ghosts and the loved ones that they can't let go. They say in the trailer, she's like, don't let me continue like this, whether you actually banish me or not. And I've been excited for that dynamic and that relationship, and especially since we saw in the previous trailer, like her walking around in the old times and him walking around in the present. I've been excited for this for the longest time. So to see anything more of it, even though we didn't see that much more, putting it back on my radar in my active brain again, knowing that that's coming out, I think it's in February, it got me excited for this next year. And knowing that big, awesome games are coming right down the pipe, just straight towards me, right into my hands. I'm going to catch them. I'm going to go, oh, yeah, Banishers. Yeah, give me that. Oh, yeah. That one looked pretty cool. I agree with you. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm on board for that one. Now, I'm assuming your last one's a one. I assume it's the one I think it is. So I'll leave it for you. And I'll go with my last one. And if you don't mention it, I'll have to mention it real quickly. But if you do, then perfect. My last one that got me so pumped up and then just shot me in the face and I flew down from the sky, man. I went, ah, Monster Hunter Wilds got a reveal trailer. I was so happy. I'm like, yes, me and Shay are rocking it now. Here we go. I'm back out in the real world hunting the monsters. You know what's up. You know what's up. Not coming until 2025. And I went, I don't mind. It's just that I got so pumped because I was like, okay, yep, summer or fall 2024, here we go. And now, no, that's, dang it. Oh, I got to wait a whole year. What if Shay's dead? He might even live that long. I won't be able to play with him. I got to wait a whole year to play with my buddy Shay again. But, man, it looks gorgeous. It's it's a, It looks like it's a successor to Monster Hunter World, 
which is the one that brought all the Americans into the Monster Hunter world. So hopefully this continues the trend and we get, of course, as you saw, some advancements from uh, Rise, the previous title here, which gives you mounts and stuff you can ride to make tra traversing the areas a lot faster and a lot quicker. You got gliding, it looks like, so you know, you're kind of flying around. Monsters and just creatures in general abound and just the world itself looking just gorgeous. I am stoked. I cannot wait. I think I might have to like get Rise on the PS5 instead of just on the Switch and give it a shot because they up the graphics up to 60 frames per second, that kind of stuff. For And I'm like, maybe I just buy it there. You know, I'll go sell. I'll go trade in my Switch copy towards a, you know, used Rise for PS5 copy or something like that and get Shay on board that. So we have something to play in the interim until this comes out to keep us in the Monster Hunter groove. But yeah, that happened. That was the uh, show closer. And I, I was stoked for it. Very exciting. Now I'm looking at my list because there's still so many on this list that I have pared down from the original 34. And I have no idea what it is that you want me to talk about. I have a feeling I know what it is. We can talk about it when you choose it. Okay. Because I'll tell you, there's too many goddamn things to talk about. The Sega trailer. The Sega. Yes, Look at all it. the games that's we the have one. in development. That's Sega! the one. Okay. Yes, dude. Oh, my God. Golden Axe getting redone. You kidding me? And it blew my head off right away because obviously I saw Beat. I saw Jet Set Radio first. And obviously we've known it's been in development. It's yeah. been rumored. It's been leaked. It's been revealed. But seeing it moving, mm -hmm. and I went, yes, all right. And then it cut, and it went, yep. hey, also, here's some Golden Axe. And I went, wait, what? Oh, what? And it cut, and it went, here's some Streets of Rage. And it cut, and it went, Crazy. hey, here's some Shinobi. Here's some this, here's some fucking that. Here's, here's this Crazy Taxi, Crazy which we taxi. also knew was in I development. I was like, oh, yes. And just taking it back to that old school Sega commercial style. Dreamcast world, too. You had the eyeball. You had him doing the Sega scream at the end. The, the 90s and 80s kid in me just exploded out of my old man body, and I was punching my fists in the air. If I, I felt like I had been drinking 10,000 beers at that point, because I went, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. All these games coming out, hopefully they're all good, obviously, but then just cycling back to that old school 90s commercial trailer vibe, incredible. I loved it. It was great. Yeah. That was the one I was assuming you were going to talk about. So we covered at least the most important ones, for God's sakes. But there's others. There's, I mean, the Dead Cells we didn't talk about. I mean, there's, there's so many, man. There's so much good stuff here. It's the freaking Prince of Persia got yeah. another trailer. We, You know, you and I can't believe we didn't even talk about Persona 3 Reload getting another trailer no. or Fantasio Re No, we didn't even Memoriam mention Fantasio. I mean, it's, yeah. it's too much. There was so many good announcements, so many good trailers. I just, whew, I'm telling you, man. It's wild. There's a lot of games coming down the pipeline. Will it beat this year's? I don't know. But it's going to be a damn good year, I can tell you that. So either way, I'm eating rich. With everything that's shown and announced, I feel like I feel like I say this every year. Like Every year is going to be bigger and better than the last. I, I felt like, oh, it's time for a drought. But then you see this. Yeah. There's no drought coming. There's no, drought There's no nothing. Coming and I'm gonna, we're going to close the show in a second, and I hate to do it because we're both on a high. We're both feeling good. So I don't want to make you feel bad, but the results are in. We yeah, made the nominations. Wanna, well, you won this we year, huh, man? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the footage, it's right there. It says it right yeah, there. Matt it says won. Matt, yeah. says Matt won. I mean, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you at the Game Awards. So what about you out there in podcast listener land? Let us know what your favorite reveals were. Let us know if you love the balance and you hate awards and you just want more reveals. Let us know that or any kind of thoughts, comments, questions, concerns. Give me congratulations about my 10th my year in a row win on the Game Awards picks. To the email, thirdshiftme at gmail.com. On the Twitter machine, at thirdshiftme. Find us on Facebook on our third shift. The Discord, the Patreon, the stream. Hit up my house. You can come to my house with congratulations. Anything else? No. Go to Eric's house with that stuff. But if you want to bring me a cake that says, congrats, you won again. Your picks are the best. I'll, I'll take it to my house. You can knock on the door. I'll leave an answer. I mean, you can come to my house. I need some fertilizer for the garden for next year. So you're more than welcome to hit me up. So come on by. If you don't want to do that, though. <laughs> now I know what Eric's saying. I know what he's implying. But I like in my brain it went it went bring Matt cake, bring Eric poop. So yeah. that it, it works well, out well. Just... That, it works out anyway. Either way you go with it. That's my <laughs> life, right? But anyways, if you don't want to do that, you can go over to the Patreon and you can throw us a few bucks. You know what? Say hey, congratulations, Matt, on quote fingers winning again magically somehow. Winning again. Give us some few bucks. Give go hey Matt, here you go. Big win. 
It's rigged. The game's rigged, folks. All right, you know the game's rigged. I don't it's think rigged. so. No. It's rigged. I gotta, no. I gotta record this next year. I gotta actually put in five minutes of real work and figure this out because this is crazy. It's impossible. It's literally impossible. Matt has bad takes on games all the time. I mean, they're good games, but they're not games that everybody likes. I don't know how I keep losing. It's crazy. It's probably just because I'm an idiot and keep going with my heart. I gotta stop going with my heart. That's what I gotta do and just pick the games I already know. All the media outlets talk about and never ever deviate from that but that's boring the hell with it i don't care it's fun <laughs> i'm done anywho you can do that you can go ahead and throw us a few bucks we appreciate it. it's a little tip jar we enjoy every last ounce of it. it keeps the lights on keeps us able to do this do that and do all the other stuff to have a good time doing the show for all of you if you cannot throw bucks you can do other things like the five star reviews we've told you about this a billion bajillion times you can throw us some questions remarks mailbag of any sort we all love that stuff and the discord get on there have some interactions with us chat a bit anything all things come on folks get in there let's have a good time you can do it we can do it we want to hear from you how'd you like the game awards what games you excited about all that good stuff another thing we got to hear about is your top five games and your two honorable mentions get that to us by the time you'll be here in the very next episode which will be dropping on or around the 21st of december because that next game of the year award special will be dropping on or around the 28th so the next time you hear this you better remember to get in a hot quick take get us that top five and your two honorable mentions and if you're in the shifter monthly topic on the patreon by the time you're hearing this, you need to go straight to your phone or to your laptop and get us your not Game of the Year submissions. We got the top five and the two honorable mentions from Steve, so he's already in there. I know Ryan Peterson's going to want to be getting in there. I know Howard's going to want to be getting in there. I know Big Doug down the street, Big Doug loves video games. He's going to want to get in here and just make our Game of the Year special like four hours long. Just an enormous thing with all the submissions and everybody's write-ups and everybody's thoughts. It's a lot of fun. But that very next episode, which will be dropping on around the 21st, you can listen to on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podbean, on Spotify, and on YouTube. And as I always say, hey, if you like what we're doing, like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, a review, a comment, a subscription, any kind of good thing on any one of those good services, because it does help us out, and we really do appreciate it. Uh. Oh, yeah. We do appreciate it so very much, just like we appreciate those five-star reviews, as I tell you every show. Come on, it's Christmas time. Give us the gift of five stars. Do that for us. You know what, everybody out there listening, if you've already done it and you're like, guys, I've done it, we've done it, I can't do it again, you can. You got grandmas, you got moms, you got sisters, you got brothers. You go, come here, you little moron, if it's your brother or sister, but if it's your mom, probably don't do that. Get over here. Let me see your freaking account. Five star. What are you doing? Doesn't matter. Shut your mouth. Boom, boom, boom. Now, Grandma Smitzel just gave us a five-star rating. Oh, thank you, Grandma Smitzel. You're the best. You know what? Your brother Steve, he, we, yeah, we all hate Steves. Boom. Give him a five-star rating. To boom, done. Give him, it doesn't matter. God bless. God, do it. Come on, everybody. We don't hate Steve. Sorry, Steve. You know, uh, you're a good guy. I was, right? was going to say, we hate some Steves, but not one particular Steve. Yeah, He'll we, never be on the hate yeah, list. Yeah, yeah. There's actually two Steves that aren't so bad. So, you know, it's actually a pretty decent track record. I got a really bad uncle who's a Steve, though, so... So I don't know. Well, two and one, it's it's getting there. We'll see. Steve, you're exception though. Don't worry about it. Well, that's right. Join us in any kind of way, any kind of format. And until that next time, there's still nothing else to say. But don't forget to shut up and sit down. Go watch that show. There's so much good stuff. Get out of here. Oh my god, there's so many things we didn't even say. Yeah, so much.